Walid Manzoor joins us here today at the STEP conference. He is the managing partner at MEVP, that stands for Middle East Venture Partners. Thank you so much, Walid, Thank for you. joining us today. So tell us, which startups do you like? Or invest in? Name? So, so I have um, investing in startups is very, very emotional, so you can think of them as, as, as a little bit as your babies, right? So you don't have preferences between your kids, theoretically. So I love all the companies we've invested in, the good ones and the bad ones. We've invested in more than 30 startups over the past nine years. Uh, and I can name some of the, some of the ones we've been uh, very close to and very uh, proud of. I love Shahiya. Shahiya was one of the, it is the biggest recipes business in, in Arabic in the Arab world. It's a fantastic business. It's been launched by two ladies and two gentlemen uh, out of a garage in Beirut and became one of the largest uh, companies in that space. Uh, we were talking about Anghami. Anghami is the largest music streaming business in MENA. Um, Luxury Closet, which is a second-hand marketplace. Um, really, I have many, a, a lot of favorite companies. Not one I'm closing, uh, following up closely on is Al Tubbi, which is a doctors on demand network, whereby through an app you can talk to any doctor and, and follow on uh, some of the uh, content out there. Um, so very, very uh, many companies. So I it's imagine. a broad range you're looking at. You're not spe spe specialized on a certain industry. Sure. You're looking at all sorts of... We like industry. new media businesses. So consumer, uh, consumer internet, web and media businesses, marketplaces. Um, uh, but also we look at verticals such as fintech or uh, uh, now we're doing more in the internet of things because we believe that this is going to be uh, the, next, the next big wave. Um, we've looked also at the travel vertical. We've uh, invested a lot in the uh, content, the regular content one, uh, gaming included. When you look at those companies, what do you look for and how much do you rely on your gut feeling? It's, oh yeah, very good question. Um, investing in a startup requires a lot of gut feeling and it requires a lot of heart because on, on all you're buying into is a piece of paper and a promise of something so you need to be comfortable with the promise of the company itself whether it's the market is going after or uh, the, uh, the the product that's building and none of that is possible if you don't in my opinion have two two elements right uh, first of all is timing you have to be convinced that that innovation is happening at the right timing. Uh, you know, many companies failed because they were early, either too early or, or too late. So you need to have a gut feeling for the timing of stuff. And the second one is actu actually the team that you're investing in. Obviously investing the people, in. yeah. The people, and not necessarily the founders also only, but the founders and the people around the founders um, who build and scale and change and decide and you know you have to be comfortable with their um, ability to take decisions to change things to uh, uh, pivot when they need to listen when they need and to be uh, wise when they need to so who's the next unicorn billion dollar valuation <laughs> it's a tough the question. next uber here in the middle east region who is that going to be Look, uh, I don't know who will hit a billion dollar in valuation, to be honest, because this is not something you can uh, uh, easily predict. Uh, but what you can predict is what will be the big, the big sectors, right? Where, where do people are going to move their attention and investment to? I think, for, for instance, the entertainment industry, especially the new media industry, is going to be fully mobile moving forward. So content uh, on, on mobile platforms, mobile platforms, entertainment mobile platforms will be, will be replacing eventually uh, a TV and capturing value from advertising and from you know, some subscription models. Uh, second, and, and that applies to many things, to many content verticals, whether it's music or video or content for children or uh, you know, even specialized content. Uh, we spoke about al before, so any content that is going to be uh, consumed uh, over mobile is going to be big in our part of the world. Second, I suspect that some on-demand businesses will also move uh, offline to online. Uh, you, we said, you said Uber, you have obviously the Kareem um, example, taxi business moving, moving on, you know, on an on-demand model. 
uh, that that we, we could apply to other verticals uh, of very established offline businesses that will do uh, will do I think well online. Um, I'm thinking of a company we just invested in called Matic, which is a home cleaning service business, an on-demand, mobile on-demand business based in Saudi and UAE and is scaling fantastically nice. It surprises me because you think the market would be saturated. Well, that's the thing. The thing is that the consumers are shifting their entry, uh, entry, uh, uh, their entry point into a service from calling over the phone into booking through an app, right? Or walking into a store from purchasing online. So that doesn't mean that the fundamental business is, 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 um, has, a, has not been there before. It's just the shift from offline to online is becoming more and more easier. And, why, and, and the companies who facilitate that shift, whether those are software as a service businesses that enable that shift or you know, mobile businesses that capture the, the audience and the attention of people, uh, are going to capture that, those industries and it's going to be the, the equivalent of a mall, the equivalent of a phone and, and that's going to intensify. What is the entrepreneurship environment here in, the, in Dubai like or here in the UAE in the region? Is it an easy place to get started or is it well, easier elsewhere? I mean, look, the, when you speak about the region, especially the Arab world, we speak about usually uh, countries that are well connected so you have a lot of migrant workforce that goes that moves well between these countries and that's very visible in the technology uh, space because you know tech company like souk it started in jordan moved here had a very large back office in jordan <laughs> so you, you have examples like that and most of the companies um, have either a back office in countries like jordan lebanon or, or egypt with a primary focus on uh, the GCC markets as an entry point, as, an, as a first market to tap into. Dubai is an excellent place to gather all of that. So the UAE and Dubai in particular are really mental, uh, have a mental uh, extraction. They're not necessarily just about the people who live here. They're, they're also about the people who transit here, who come and work, go back, uh, or who have re relationship across the region, etc. Et so if you think of Dubai as an extension as an idea, mm. as an extension to the, the, the just the geography, then the region is actually fascinating because there's a lot of uh, uh, good talent that's shaping up. I started in this business 10 years ago, so I, I saw that evolution happen uh, from the quality of uh, companies, quantities of companies, and not only just the funding side, but just, just talking about the, the quality of the teams that, that found companies. And not only founders, but also talent moving and working from uh, a companies into startups. What makes a good talent? Someone who's really think, good at starting a business. I think we, I, I'm, I'm, that's something that actually makes me a little bit mad. About when, if you want to talk about things that make us mad, is that concept of you know starting a business without talking about the product. Usually, companies that succeed are in the technology business have solved a technology problem through a product that they've built and the business came later. So you can't walk around and be an entrepreneur. This is not a business card. This is not something you learn at school and you, you go either and say, live it and breathe it or you're just, you're, that, you're just that not is, made for it. That is something that comes as a consequence of engineers and technicians and experts with real deep expertise building something that matters and that people want. And passion I bet. Of course, I mean, passion is everything in life. You don't have passion in life, you go through life, you know, blah. Your <laughs> Not idea goes astray, so no passion, one's ever gonna hear about it. Exactly, passion has to be at the core of everything you do. So, but in terms of building a technology entrepreneurship ecosystem, it has to start with the product that you're building, right? So, I, I like entrepreneurs who come, walk around, building things that work and matter, as opposed to entrepreneurs who want to build businesses, right? You, 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 it's, it's a fundamental DNA, uh, sorry, it's a fundamental difference in DNA between these two groups of people. You're either, you cannot follow a businessman who's gonna come tell you, oh look, uh, I have a business and it could be anything, but just as long as it's a business, as opposed to somebody who's, or a team who's actually put in, put in their mind and heart into fixing 
a problem using using tools and, and using science to do it. So, MAD stands for make a difference. So how do you make a difference? You personally. Uh, I mean, that's it's what what makes us go on in life, right? Is is I think is to a certain extent build uh, something meaningful for us as individuals uh, and then something meaningful for the people around us. Um, I think I've been personally extremely lucky, extremely lucky to be one of the first, uh, there are obviously many people before me, but one of the first who've been involved in this, in this industry 10 years ago in this part of the world. And I think the difference... How do you make a difference? How do by you investing. make a difference? By investing. By investing in the right people. Exactly, investing in the right businesses and the so right people. So having a better gut feeling than someone else. Well, sometimes it's not that good because the people you invest in don't deliver because of X, Y, Z reason. But that's fine. You still have invested, and you 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 know you, you showed faith and you believed, and that's very important to believe in the in the business you invest in, even if it fails, because nothing goes away, right? In this. In this industry, people recycle themselves. Knowledge gets recycled. Nobody actually, uh, we've invested in, uh, whether they succeed or not succeeded, have disappeared once their venture was out. They've always gone on and did something else. And they've always gone on and touched many people's lives, either through recruiting them in their own teams, or passing some knowledge, or challenging them, or pushing the agenda. One thing that, that actually makes a difference, and why is it, is, investing in people is, is makes a difference uh, the people we invest in tend to be extremely serious about the impact they, they make and they and and they do it unconsciously they don't w w wake, wake up and say oh I'm gonna make an impact in life they actually make an impact by building great product that solve problems and that that solves and you're picking rest. those people giving them a platform giving them capital thank That's you so what much I'm Thank Walid Manzoura, thank you for uh, thank you for talking to us. Thank today. you, thank you.